Hello there. This is Between Shelf and Screen. I'm Ryan. And I'm you. Alex. Oh my gosh, you got me. We are covering you. Not you. Okay. That's enough. We already did this Yeah, we, we already did this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the show. The show, you, not the book. Yes. Now we the, are The going one that everybody knows about. Right. The one that... We both watch before reading the book because yep. we are fake fans, apparently. Yep. We don't like books. Yeah, whatever. We only started this to discuss the TV shows and the movies. Yeah, we wanted to seem cool and pretentious. Right. Yeah. We haven't actually read... All of these are display books. Yeah, like what? Like It just looks good on a shelf, dude. Right. Mm. Yeah, so we're only going to discuss the show and nothing about the book today. Yeah, not a single thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyways, did you fall for that? That was so funny. Oh, my god. That was so good. We pranked you guys. The, the intro took us way too long. Yeah, we're, we had caffeine yep. at 8 p.m. It was a good idea. Is it, is it 8 p.m.? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, right. We started really late. Yeah, we did. Um, so, yeah, speaking of which, this is our second re-recording. Yeah, the other one, the audio corrupted not everything the video, were corrupted. Yeah, yeah, it all got corrupted so yeah couldn't open it so it was just kind of like a screw you so that's why this one's gonna come out a wee bit late yeah sorry about that guys rip and now you get to hear our uh terrible jokes all that involve again. the word you just like we did last episode scary yep. to tune in to the same old thing <laughs> um so, what do you want to start with? First, I'll go over the trigger warnings before I forget. All right, of just all right, right. both the book and the show uh, involve themes of, or it mentions themes of suicide, addiction, sexual assault, and stalking, and murder. So, just a heads up. All really fun topics. Right. Yeah. It's something to totally joke about on our podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So, um,. Now we'll get into like our general opinions on yeah. the show. What did you think about the casting? Uh, really good. Yeah. As far as like the actors, like they they did a really good job. Is that what you imagine? Like while reading the book? Well, I had no choice. Both... Yeah. yeah, I had no choice but to imagine them. Right, that's true. But like t- now knowing the book, do you think like you saw them differently? Yeah, reading. Watching it. I guess reading the book. I like I envisioned Joe as I don't know just like a more creepy unsettling person and in the uh, in the show he's a lot more charismatic and like a lot more like suave I guess yeah they made him very charming yes very charming and has actual somewhat morals I mean they're still yeah not great he's somewhat redeemable in the show yeah. but in the book no which I guess now we'll get in, or we'll talk about Joe, since we're already on the topic. Yeah. Of, like, how we thought about the main character in the show versus the book. Um, As we mentioned, he was a lot more likable, which, like, I did not like at all that they did that. Because it took away from the book. Like, Joe isn't supposed to be like that. You're not supposed to like it. Like, he's supposed to be a stalker, a yeah. Like serial stalker, a He's like yeah, he's like a narcissistic, pretentious stalker. Yeah. And like we're inside his head, so obviously like you get put under a spell and it works a lot better from his perspective, but then you get shoved into the show, which you are in his head while he's monologuing a lot, but then like he ha- there's this whole other subplot that involves Joe heavily that I mean we'll we'll get into with the spoilers, but it just fell out of place, and I don't really understand the showrunner's decision as far as making that whole new subplot. It kind of fit in the end, but like that's because they kind of forced it down your throat. Throughout the whole season. Yeah. And like it was in- This subplot was introduced in the first episode, which we'll mention the characters that we're talking about. Like Claudia, Ron, and Paco are in the show, but we're not at all in the book. And the only one in that subplot that it includes is Karen. That is in the book. Yeah. Yeah. 
But again, that story differs a lot, but that's yep. more into spoilers. So we'll yeah. cover that later. But yeah, they added just a lot more situation that Joe found himself in where he did choose the morally right thing to do. Yeah. He's or at like least a... the better option, not necessarily morally right, but that was not at all how Joe was in the book. Like he did yeah. almost everything the worst way possible. And I think he would, you know, now I think about it, and I we did mention this a little bit in the last time that yeah. we talked about this, but um, I think they were just trying to write off that Dexter crowd, like the Dexter wave. Because if you guys are familiar with Dexter at all, it's um, basically the serial killer that works for a, uh, a forensic department in like Miami-Dade. It's a show, obviously. <laughs> but he, he works for, um, not Sheriff's Department, the Miami Police Department. Police, yeah. But uh, yeah, he works in the forensics. He's a blood spanner analyst, but he's also like by night a uh, serial killer who happens to be like a vigilante and has like a moral code. And he's like a very likable person for that reason. He kind of like cleans up the streets. And I think what you was trying to do is capitalize off of those fans. If I'm... That makes sense. Cause yeah. like, it must have been a marketing move. It had to have been. Yeah, and it's not necessarily saying that they're trying to make the audience see Joe was. like, Because he's not a vigilante in that way. Obviously, he's not like stalking yeah. women that... I don't know. like. Not, not, in, yeah, not, in right. the main, not in the main plot line with Beck. But like with Paco. That's true. Yeah, yeah. the the sub um, plot that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they just wanted to be able to produce more seasons, get more money out of this series. They wanted the audience to at least have some like... Attachment. Life, yeah. Yeah. Some reason to hold on and not think like, wow, he's discussing like why I don't want to keep watching more because this is way too disturbing. Which like honestly the book... Kind of like, it's not for the faint of heart. The series still isn't. Like, there's definitely disgusting things that he does. But yeah. it's not to the level of the book was, which, like, I don't know how I feel about that because, like, I don't want, I don't know, thinking about the show trying to make you like this guy in some way or pity. Like, even some of the decisions he made like the minor ones were different from the book to make him seem more like humane yeah and i just i don't like that thought because clearly he's not a type of person that should be right. liked and i think the audience can understand that but and as far as like the base storyline that you have going on it it by i don't really think it enhances it like it just doesn't seem like a solid move and they had they had a problem with that through the entire season were like the different characters like beck is more redeemable um peach peach is m more understand like you understand her character she still isn't the best but well she she's catches smart. on yeah, yeah. She, she catches on to joe and is much more active and like actually like fighting him i guess yeah like or, trying like, to stop him and protect uh, back yeah. rather than she was just pretentious in the yeah. book and yeah. wanted to be mean for the fun of it which honestly you could make a case for like how they did it in the show makes her questionably more dislikable just because like she like a lot of times she would accuse joe of stuff like even though she had no evidence and just because she was trying to gain um you know headway with beck that's true. And, like, just because, like, she, she had no, like, a lot of times she had no idea. She was just, like, there's something off about him. And also, I don't like him getting involved with Beck. Which, yeah. in the book, that was just the whole thing that was going on. And Peach just, like, did not care about Joe. But, like, she was yeah. actively just, like. Trying to push him further th rather than, like, just yeah. not caring. But I think in the beginning it was kind of like that. But then she caught on pretty heavily. Yeah. I like. I think she started to gain actual reason pretty quickly, yeah. and it wasn't just like, "I'm gonna throw all this at you and see what sticks." Like the book, he was the only one in the library. Mm -hmm. This is at the beginning. It also doesn't really add anything to the plot besides just Peach has one thing to hold against Joe. It's not yeah. a spoiler, basically, but Joe was in her library, and then a book goes missing, and she's like, "Wait a second you know, the one person that was in the library. Like, I don't think... Like, she had actual reasoning behind that, I guess. Yeah. So... And uh, I think uh, in the show, they definitely touch on how, like, Peach 
Peach actively says a lot of times to Beck, it's like, oh, well, like he's like poor. She, he can't provide for you. And I'm, that that can make you dislike her more. But like in the book, she's already dislikable enough. Yeah, in the book, you really... You don't there really was need nothing more redeemable. Yeah, you don't really need more reasons with Peach. Yeah. Yeah. Also, if you haven't listened to the book episode, we're going to be referring to that a lot. So yeah. uh, give that a listen. Yeah. Um, or else you're not going to ra- understand a lot of yeah what we're saying yeah it's just in the show that they, they try to like have this different spin where like the characters are redeemable somehow in a lot of ways and it's not that like like said all this like it's not that like beck was just like an absolute terrible person like she was she just had a lot of issues and she mm-hmm. was not necessarily a good person but not bad enough to get what she got yeah <laughs> right right um but yeah beck was like i feel like a, i would say a huge change yeah so, because huge 180 because in the book she just never writes yeah or the, anything she's she just has lazy no, yeah no motivation for anything no she doesn't try to go towards anything she just is looking for the easiest way yeah and like the next best thing which like also includes men and just all that like she has issues and in the show, they actually show her, like, trying to work through a lot of it. She still makes mistakes, but she, yeah. you actually grow to appreciate her more. In the show, yeah, for yeah. sure. And then, like, in the book, I think, you know, this is probably what she was capitalizing off, like, the, the author. She was probably capitalizing off, like, everybody's probably had an experience with a guy or a girl that you're interested in. And they keep on acting like you are, but they pull away. They just do that whole thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm making that motion. <laughs> the people with the audio are just like, what? But, the whoa, whoa, oh, oh, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you get it. You know exactly yeah. what we're talking about. <laughs> but <laughs> I think that's probably what she was capitalizing off of in the book, just because like everybody's had that person that's like kind of just like floating around, doesn't know what they want, and just yeah. like taking advantage of people, kind of like Beck does. Right. And, um, but in the in the show, there she's just total, like almost complete one eighty. Like she's really trying to. She's just stuck around this group of people that's super toxic, including <laughs> Joe. And yeah, like, it's so it's so bad. Yeah, it it like you know, and it's funny because like me just watching the show, like I would have just watched it and been like, okay, yeah, this is what they went for, it worked, it works in its own right. But now that I have the source material, I'm not so sure. That I like it. Right. I know. Like, I feel like I appreciated the mo- or the show more before I read the book. and Which I feel like typical. Like, oh, you read the book, it's better than the movie or the show. But I try to, like, keep them separate to some extent. But, mm. like, oh, my gosh, the book was so much better. I guess yeah. this kind of gets in. We can get into our ratings yeah. overall. Um, and last one, I changed my rating style. I'm not doing five star ratings anymore, or like star based ratings. Right. I'm doing really bad, bad, okay, good, really good. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna just like for people listening, of course, he'll just not say the actual rating and just demonstrate with his hand, so it'll yeah. really help the audience. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it'll make it more clear, I'm sure. But okay, so as far as for the show, I would say like, it's good. I oh okay you're saying good as in like overall enjoyable or and then are we doing a separate one for how accurate it is to the source material oh yeah for how accurate it is I would say still good leaning on okay yeah it's a different thing it's not necessarily like you I don't think it they did enough changes for like people to just that have read the book first to just totally hate it Right. I, I don't think it was drastic enough for people to just push them away. I feel away. like it could with some people. I don't yeah. know. I'm, I say that the show itself is good. And strictly, honestly, just because the actors did a phenomenal job. Yeah, they carried it. And like the they writing really was did. pretty good, too. Yeah, the writing was. Um, the storyline like made sense. There weren't a lot of plot holes. Yeah. There was nothing like typically bad about it. Right, yeah. And then... Accuracy, I would say it's like okay, max. I, That's fair. I think it's it differs from the book enough where 
it's blatantly visible first of all like noticeable it's yeah. pretty big changes um and i think it might not make someone hate it that's read the book but i think they it's very hard to find someone that's read both the book and the show to prefer the show more i guess that's what yeah. i would think taking away yeah I, but that's also my that, own opinion that's a decent assumption I, I don't know i you know after i watched um I've talked about this in previous podcasts, but after I watched like The Last of Us adaptation through HBO, they made a decent amount of changes, and it wasn't like anything that strayed away from the main storyline. And the way the showrunners did it is the ma- the changes they made only added to like the depth of the characters and the storyline, and like that's like that's like what everybody wants out of an adaptation. Yeah. And um, as far as the show for you compared to the book they would made changes and it's its own thing and I don't think it really enhanced it the way that it should have I could agree with that yeah I don't think the changes I guess that's a good way to judge things I don't think the changes improved a certain part uh yeah that's pretty much all we can cover as far as like spoiler free stuff so right. I, I think we should get into the spoilers. Okay, yeah. Well, warning. If you're going to... If you plan on watching the show now... Uh, 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 <laughs> warning. <laughs> Actually, that sound will make you just not want to watch the rest of this. <laughs> so how we're going to set this up is we're going to go by episode. There's 10 episodes in the first season. The first season is directly related to the first book of the series. Like, it ends at... The same spot. And, like, then I will get... there's new twists, right. which we're not so happy about. Right. And we'll get into that. But we'll go episode by episode. I <gasps> will say props to... What did you just do? <laughs> Stop spoiling it. <laughs> Wait, did I? Oh. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> we're... Uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> We'll go through episode by episode. Oh, yes. But I will give props to the book and the show. Or one thing the show adapted well is that, like, it both started at the same point and, like, ended really at the same point. Same general plot. Yeah. It just was, like, if the start was point A and the end was point B, like, it just went on totally different paths than the book to get from point A to point B. Yeah, a lot of times. points were the same. So there's that. Um, so yeah, episode one. Uh, first, as we mentioned, we are introduced to Claudia, Ron, and Paco, who are not in the book at all. Yep. So that's a huge major change, and they are reoccurring characters. Yeah, they come over a lot. They take up a lot of show time. Yeah. And they show a more compassionate side to Joe, which not really. Yeah. yeah what he's all about in the book doesn't really fit the narcissistic sociopathic stalker but we'll go with it i guess yeah (laughs) and then we're also introduced to beck our main love interest for joe uh who is immediately also shown being more productive like she's has a job which she never had in the book i think she did have a job no she was living off of like free student you're right yeah and she didn't have a MFA job. It was MFA program or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then she realized that, like, oh, I guess I kind of do need money to live up to, like, my rich friends yeah. always going out and all that. So that was the only reason she decided to get a job in the book. But she already had one in the show. And she had that whole professor storyline going on. This was, like, a subplot for a few episodes. Yeah. And... It kind of, like, defined... I would say it was a defining part about Beck's character. Of yeah, just like, like, who she was. Yeah, and sh- it introduced her really well, I guess. Yeah. Of how she was supposed to be, of, like... She was kind of... Their professor had bad intentions, basically. Like, yeah. she was looking for a TA job and wanted just support with her writing and someone that was going to give her... Uh, just a, a pra- praise and mm-hmm. all that. And this professor was giving it to her and they both... Only for like uh, the thought of like sexual 
favors. Yeah. And she kind of knew, like, all her friends told her, and she knew, um, and she, like, fed into it a little bit, which, again, not at all her fault. Like, she just thought, like, oh, yeah, this that, is that's, what that's it That's the takes. most Beck thing that yeah, she does Yeah, and it, it is a defining character. Like, she repeatedly feeds into that um, kind of stuff to, like, see where it goes, but then this professor made a move at her, um, and she stood up for herself because, like, Again, just because... You know, consent's pretty cool. Yeah, (laughs) and, like, just because she wore red lipstick or whatever doesn't mean it's okay at all, especially, like, from a professor to a student. Just not okay. Yeah. And then he, like, blew up on her and, like, just said that her writing was awful. Yeah. And then Um, when he said, you give me those, like, blowjob eyes or something crazy. Yeah, disgusting. A lot of disgusting characters in this show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, which they yeah. did hold up because the book yeah. showed a lot of just the bad in people. Yeah. And the show did that as best they could, I would say. Yeah. But Beck, I would say that it differs because I feel like book Beck, even though this was also just not a plot line in the book at all. I don't know if we mentioned that. So, like, she never had anything with a professor. But mm-hmm. I feel like book Beck, just based on her character... Would have just followed through. Right. To get... Yeah. You know, what she wanted. Um, again, like, just I just... skated. Yeah, I just... I don't think that book back and TV show back are the same character, not yeah. gonna lie. Yeah, it's, it's just the reoccurring habit of making them redeemable, which is a choice. Right. Um, so... And then Paco... Oh, yeah, we should probably tell them. This is gonna go into episode two as well. Paco, Claudia, and Ron... Paco's little kid that lives next door in Joe's apartment building. And then Joe gives him a lot of books and is very fatherly to him. Mm-hmm. And Ron is the abusive alcoholic dad figure, stepdad. And then Claudia is the addict mom. And he's always outside on the steps in the apartment complex reading the, jo- the books that Joe gives. And then Joe talks to him and tries to make him feel better. And he'll take him to the bookstore and like... He basically is like a father-ish type because Paco really doesn't have a good father figure. Mm -hmm. Um, And so Joe is like that towards him and like really tries to care for him. And like I really hated that they did that because Joe is not a father. Like he's just not mentally okay in the book. And especially since all the abuse he went through with Mr. Mooney. Like the... Him ending up in the place he was with Paco just being, like, a very good, loving, like, sort of older brother or father figure is just not going to be likely. Right. Like, for how consistent... Like, I could have seen it here and there, whatever, like, masking and being... Like, because people can definitely do that, whether they have ill intentions or not. Um... But because this was a reoccurring thing of him just being good, like, you would think, I don't know, he's just not... Yeah, it just doesn't seem like a Joe thing to do. Right. It's, with uh, his, it felt out of place yeah. at the beginning, and it feels out of place at the end. Yeah, and, like, with his mental state, it's just, he was unwell. And, like, at least yeah. in the book, they made him, like, very explosive, where you really couldn't tell yeah. What was going to happen, how he was going to react. I feel like they didn't really do that as much in this show. Yeah. He was pretty consistent of like, you knew where, how he was going to ra- react towards things. Right. Um, and in this episode, we kind of, he, get, he gets into stalking Beck a little bit. And then he's just following her in. You're inside his head. It's got the monologue going. And you're watching her do all their stuff. You're learning things about her. And then I think at the end, it introduces Benji, right? Yes. Yes, um, because I think I've written down that like Benji was already in the uh, cage. By the end of it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that was like the very end. Well, end? End? End. end. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Benji, again, another just notable, like not <laughs> good character. Yeah. Just um, frat morally, boy, frat boy douchebag yeah. archetype. Not morally okay, basically. Yeah, he's just Which, out for the bag. Honestly, I think they made Benji like. Benji's probably the most accurate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he was pretty good. I did like Benji 
a lot. Yeah. Well, and that, I didn't and that actor like I've seen him before. I don't remember his name, but he's a uh, he shows up in a lot of stuff. He's good. He's good. Yeah. Guy. He was he played the character really well. Yeah. I didn't actually like the character, but I liked how he played him, and I liked how accurate he was. But Benji was also like not great, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And I feel like in the show, one one addition that I did like is when he had them down there in the cage. Benji was basically just accurately diagnosing Beck and then like telling Joe he's just like you don't want this which is like kind of funny and like it makes sense that he would say that just try to get out of the situation but he was being for real too and they touched a little bit on that in the book yeah but like in the book it's much easier to shrug off but in in the show I I think they did a better job of like setting you up for like Beck's not who you think she is. Especially since it was, like, in the very beginning. Yeah. Like, it was within the first two episodes, um, I would say. Yeah. Because I think, I think, getting into episode two, uh, Joe kills Benji. Yeah, it's pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, it was very quick, and he, um, the, I would say that the death was just as surprising. Yeah. Like, it was the same way of the latte with the peanut oil that he's allergic to. Yeah, especially if you're watching the show first off. Like, I, I had the, like, you still have the hope. You're like, oh. Like, I remember watching it, and you're like, oh, he might let Benji go, and he might, that might be his thing. He's just a master manipulator. But no, <laughs> no, Joe just kills him. <laughs> I would say the hope was even more in the show, and I kind of, like, they did add that, mm. um, that the book never did, but the show added that uh and benji tried to uh introduce evidence of like him murdering oh, yeah. someone when he was in college or whatever yeah, through, like hazing yeah through hazing they accidentally murdered someone was it drowning mm-hmm. yeah and very sad and they had it on video and he saved it to like use against his friends which like awful things do yep. like benji terrible guy <laughs> yeah but he then was able to use that to say like here you have this evidence like if i ever expose you you can expose me and like i'd get in so much more trouble because i killed someone Mm -hmm. um and so like you had that thought of like well he has actual evidence to hold against him like benji's not stupid he wouldn't mind just getting out of here he doesn't care about beck yeah he just wants to get back to his money yeah so you had more hope of him getting out of this nope he yeah. still died, which I I think I liked that addition. Mm-hmm. Um, episode two, uh, Candace shows up, or sorry, Candace's friend shows up at oh, Peach's yeah. party. Yeah, with uh, Beck and Joe going on the first date. Yeah, which that was like, that was kind of accurate that first. Well, it wasn't yeah, their first, first date yeah. in the book, but it was like their second. Right. But then the show made it their first, which I didn't which, care yeah, for. Fair, fair enough. Like, um, you can do that. I don't think that's a big enough change. Yeah. It's just, you know, kind of uh, making things go by faster. But then so-called Candace's friend shows up. Uh, and which, starts, like, accusing Joe. Right. About, like, something weird happening between Candace and Joe's relationship. And then she ultimately disappeared. And... Like, we never got that really in the book. We knew about Candace. Like, he mentioned her here and yeah. there about her being his ex. But Candace like, is a way bigger plot point. Yes, Candace is a huge. And, like, this will then be later brought up um, towards the end to, like, really hone in something happened to Candace, which was never, like, even found out by any other character. Mm-hmm. So, um, that was, like, just interesting i don't know how i feel about the whole candace candace thing i don't like it we'll get well, we'll more get into that. that but i'll just yeah. let you know now i this... don't like it <laughs> mm. i don't know i'll have to it was, it's a lot of plot holes that's true that i think was the and it falls biggest in season issue. two <laughs> yeah. but you're just like okay um i was with three uh one thing that i noticed throughout like after this first day like beck is like really interested in joe right and in the book not so much yeah Yeah, he has to fight for that interest yes and she is just like immediately just infatuated yeah it really was not that big of a struggle and she kind of bounces back here and there but it was not like the book at all and again i didn't like that because joe like 
I liked seeing the struggle because Joe was just it genuinely showed, it, yeah. obsessive. Yeah. And it was not... It shows him deteriorating. Yeah. And it just showed how far he would go, I guess, rather than like he... You didn't get to see a lot of that. You didn't get to see a lot of the behind the scenes either. And then one of their like biggest fights, Joe was like the result of, because I think he was burying Benji's body. Yeah. And he like just starts being like mean. He just, like, he's just basically, there's no filter from his brain. His yeah. Mouth. And because he's stressed out because there's hikers coming up. Yeah. And he's and trying to discover like, the body that yeah. he's burying. Like I get why he was stressed out, but again, it was just, yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, and I feel like it didn't show... It didn't really do anything. Yeah, it didn't show the bias that was in the book a lot because Joe made himself out to be this amazing, great character. Like, we could tell as readers, he's clearly not. He's delusional. Yeah. But he's, like, never really said wrong about him except here and there he was like, oh, I guess I did this wrong. But, like, he thought he was the most amazing boyfriend that there could ever be. And yeah. I just felt like, again, wasn't really like him to do that. Yeah. Let's get into episode four now. Um, this episode started with Beck's mono inner monologue. And we followed her point of view, which like... Yeah, when, I, when she's meeting the captain, which is her dad. Yeah. Spoiler alert, it's her dad. Yeah. Um, it's pretty lame. I didn't like being in her head. And it was just like so innocent, too. It, was such a it, was, it didn't add punch. anything to the story. It didn't. It was just like a quirky little thing that they did. And, lame. Didn't and like they it. did it again later on, I'm pretty sure. But I did not like it because yeah. I think as I said in the last episode, talking about the book, is that he is biased. He, like that's the whole point. He's not a reliable narrator. Yeah. And I think the show did a really good job of like keeping us in his head. Like... It felt like we were there, and they had a lot of his inner monologue, and it worked for the show. Sometimes it's weird to add that, but it worked for the show, and then they just added in Bex, and I was like, what was the point? Yeah, and her, like, oh my god, the way she says, like, oh, I'm the worst, she says that all the time, and he goes, Beck, you're the worst. It's like, shut up. It literally felt like an it was episode just cringe. of New Girl. <laughs> it was cringy. Um, it was pretty lame. And just not important for the show, really. And, um didn't add anything. They just wanted to surprise us that Joe followed her there. Like, no dip he did. Yeah, obviously. Obviously he would do that. And then also, he meets her extended, or I guess, uh, step family. There, like, Joe literally gets called out and everything. Meets her there. And yeah. It's... And it wasn't, like, it was very awkward, but she didn't like have any real red flags about it and she's like, like oh you follow me that's so sweet it's like wasn't it like out of state <gasps> or no it was out of town yeah it was definitely yeah. out of town it was a drive and like he played it off of like oh i just go on these no he didn't he ended up confessing yeah he's just like yeah see look this, look at this right. little thing i followed you here no. oh my god yeah again he's like i just didn't like leaving it where we were at and i'm like yeah he didn't like leaving them where they were at yeah, and, and then back if she had any sort of smarts, would have been like, that's not cool. Yeah, he just saw like that she was in the area. I think from her Twitter. Yeah. And he somehow like drove hours there, got a costume because it was like a, a festival type thing where they were all dressed up in old timey wear. And she was like, "Oh yeah, that was cool. That was so sweet that he wanted to fix things." Like no. Yeah. Homeboy would give you a call and like ask to meet you. And then also, and yeah. To recover. Like, he would not follow you to some. And then there was also that whole point of him, like, you know, she basically confesses that her dad's not dead. And then Joe's like, you know, it's okay. And they have that whole. She blows up on him in the restaurant. And then Joe's like basically saying all the right things. And then out of nowhere, she's just really rude to Joe. And it was just, it was just so stupid. Yeah, I think it makes sense why she was, because she was very emotional. And yeah. just, like, everything that happened with her whole family and stuff. Like, I understand she was not, like, ready to listen. But, again... But, you know, it, it, just, it just didn't feel like that needed to happen. Yeah, and it made him feel... Or it made him look like a better guy, quote-unquote. Like, oh, he's just trying to help her out. And yeah. she ended up apologizing. And I was like, first of all, girl, you did not need to 
apologize for all that going on. He was not supposed to be there. Like, mm-hmm. he sh- really shouldn't have been. And, like, again, the fact that... I don't know why she wasn't freaked out that he first lied and said, oh, I just ended up here. And, like, he it's wasn't... The world. Yeah. And he wasn't, like, trying to talk to her. He was clearly just, like, wandering around, like, by near her. It was, Lurking. again... Yeah, like, how did she not just, like, red flag he is following me he is watching me he didn't come to make things better because he tried to blend in it was yeah. just altogether weird and they may try to make him seem like he was being the better guy of like i'm gonna listen to the like problems you have with your family like he should not be involved in that kind of stuff no especially at the point of their relationship yeah like a second date Right, which, like, okay, things move in different ways, whatever, but it just felt so out of place. Yeah, I didn't like it either. That that episode was kind of a flop. Yes, I agree with that. Episode four was just a big mess, and I I feel like it made the plot worse, or Mm -hmm. where they were going. Yeah. I like, in the book, again, like, he was not noticed. He thought he was, which, like, actually added thrill of, like, oh, my gosh, we don't know if at the very end Beck did see him because, like, he looked or she looked his way. And then, like, he thought he for sure saw her or she for sure saw him and that she was going to bring it up. And that's why she was avoiding him and whatever. Like, it added something to the plot. While this. Yeah. It was just so. Ugh. And then episode five, we had a lot of notes. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, moving into episode five, again, that, like, episode four was just its own isolated thing, it yeah, felt like. And their definitely. relationship fixed again after yeah. that one fight. Whatever. Um, so, episode five, this is where, like, Peach is really honing in on what Joe is, like, acting like. And she's trying to catch him with something. Uh, so... Peach, like, investigates at his work to see if he has that book that was missing. And she's just, like, going around questioning the yeah, guy. Yeah, the employee, uh, Ethan. Yeah, and she's, like, I think she, she was the reason why Beck ended up knowing that Joe was there, right? hmm Yeah. So, uh, she, like, let her know that like joe isn't at the bookstore he's supposed to be in the same area that you are whatever just adding more to that uh let's see yeah peach in that episode uh if i remember correctly she's just like downplaying joe just like talking smack she's like oh you're not gonna want this back because she's like in love with him yeah whatever yeah um and then oh my gosh this whole episode was also just a lot this was like the main thing with like peach just like heat of her investigation and what was going on yeah this was also when like the whole drama between peach and annika or annika that was like so childish again i didn't like the... I mean that that was fine. It the the big difference there though between uh, this and the book is like Peach is involved in Beck's like friend group friend group, which in the book it's complete like they're completely separate. Right. So like they tolerate Peach and they actually seemed somewhat like her in the show and they're involved with each other's life, which they showed in um, this episode. A lot. Yeah. And I... Th- what, what did... uh The wh- video... But, like, what what was... The, why... I can't remember. Why, why did Peach post that? Because Annika... Joe convinced Annika to post that picture oh, of where Peach she looked before yeah. the nose job. And then she followed up with anonymously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The alarm is going off. We've said something wrong. Um, but she ended up posting anonymously. In episode five... Uh, Joe tries to kill Peach. Uh, be more and enthusiastic. Is... <laughs> Joe this tries to kill Peach. This was a very important aspect to the story. And we are very excited for it. 
Yeah, that was good. He, Joe he, tried to kill her. He hits her with a rock, and then, yeah, then the episode. Very ends. exciting. Well, it, yeah. it does. It doesn't end there. Then he goes back to his apartment, and, and um, and then one. <laughs> Where does he go? To his apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Apart me. No, he goes to his apartment, <laughs> and then Ron's there lurking, and he's just like, it's the whole thing with him and Paco. Yeah, that's kind of forgettable. Fun. And then he's just like, stay away from my kid. And then Joe's just like, says something snarky back. And then Ron beats the hell out of him. Yeah, which in the book, his uh, ex co worker or ex employee beat yep. him up. So, like, it was trying to loop that back in. Yeah, but it was. It they was, never had an ex employee because well, Ethan was always. What the was employee. the first employee? Do you remember? No, we also didn't remember last time. Yeah. I want to <laughs> say, like, Simon. Probably not. Name out some a few more names. Trevor. I was thinking uh, Rise. Stop. <laughs> Maybe uh, Rise Messiah. Yeah. Cannon. One of Nick Cannon's kids. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we had a whole tangent about that. Yeah, he has a lot whole of kids, uh, and they all have the, the wackiest names. They all have very niche names. Yeah, and they're they're pretty bad. <laughs> objectively objectively yeah. oh my gosh one is named rise messiah but we'll, we'll let's just <laughs> yeah sorry that's not the employee's name but just thought that was uh worth noting because it's on the top of my head and i have to add my to get own the thoughts, thoughts out yeah i have to make sure that everyone knows exactly what i'm thinking at this very moment yep nope. So, and then episode five, I will say that the, even though there wasn't as much planning for the way that Joe first tried to kill Peach, it was, like, pretty similar. Yeah, it's the same And, like, how it happened, how it ended up. It was, like, whatever. Yeah, and he thinks he killed her, but then he didn't. Yeah, then goes into episode six. Uh, This is where, like, Peach is recovering, and she wants to get out of town with Beck, and I think Joe finds out at this point that she planned like a tr- one way yeah, Paris one-way trip, trip and then to the they both were gonna of them. reinvent their life. It was literally just Peach trying to steal away Beck. And it, was that was that in the book? That was not in the book. No. Okay, I didn't think so. Yeah, I think she wanted. I think the book mentioned like Peach wanting uh, Beck to stay at their house that's like secluded, but mm-hmm. not to like run away to a different country. Right. And she's. So then, yeah, Joe rolls up, and yeah. then he crashes his car. And Joe the cop also comes like up. tell first before that, Joe tells her to try to get her to not stay um, with Peach, or before she even knows that Peach has this plan. Yeah, and they get into a little fight. Yeah, he they get into a fight because Joe tells her straight up that Peach is in love with her, which like Joe never did in the book, because right. he like almost in the book they kind of like. He kind of felt connected to Peach in that way, but then yeah. ended up viewing her worse than like he was actually the good, she was the bad. But it was right. like this whole unsaid relationship between the two of them, while this right. was just more like they were enemies. Yeah. But you know, same difference. Yeah. It's just more out of the open. Yeah. And then in this episode, Joe finally kills Peach. Yeah. And he and also, then... they confront each other, which again, Never happened in the book because he snuck up on Peach while in the show Joe didn't. Yeah, he like, just he, saw he her. found her on. Or she was going for a run on the beach and then he just like strangles her. Right in the book, but in this they like have this whole talk, which I kind of like. I feel like Peach would not be the person that you just take down, and then especially with him, it's not his first time, but he was not as like violent like physically active like with benji that didn't require really anything yeah and with candace again we also oh he starts having the vision with candace during these episodes yeah and which is again not something that happened in the book but we do know that in the book he killed candace i think by drowning her too yeah but again they you had know, like a yeah. sort of trust. It was something like that, but she had a trust for him, so it, he didn't have to be as violent, I guess. While like Peach, 
I don't know. I just felt like that was the show kind of added more suspense rather than yeah how it happened in the book. So and I will say there was that like one line in the book where like she sees that it's Joe and she's like you and she starts fighting back, but then she just dies straight away. But then in the show she's kind of more badass. She has a gun on him and she's yeah. about to like take him out. Okay. And there's more of like a oh let's let Bella talk. Very good. <laughs> Why Very did you just good. Go silent? <laughs> <laughs> but there's more of a like thrill to it and like you don't know who exactly is going to get the upper hand and the next episode they even introduce it like uh joe died i can't remember exactly how it went but like it sounded like peach was talking about like you know what i'm trying i'm trying to think sorry i'm having a hard time because i can't remember the words that it started with but it sounded like peach won and that she was talking about the events but it was actually them reading the note quote unquote suicide note that she left um but they were doing it in the actress's voice so it like kind of threw you off which i honestly liked about the show yeah that's that's another pro you can get just from like films and stuff like of like confusing just by it's like what what happened and then it comes into and you're like oh okay yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, and that 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 episode was done relatively well. Yeah, I even though it was a little different, that was one where I think those changes it added, served it well. Yes, yeah, and both I think were all right, but like for their own thing, I don't think either were bad. But I kind of prefer the shows just of like what it was trying to achieve. I think it did a better job. I'd agree. Honestly, um, going into episode seven. Uh, then Joe and Beck like dated a while after the whole Peach thing, which didn't happen in the book. Yeah. Again, their like relationship was a lot more consistent and like. Yeah. I wouldn't say healthier because, you know. Yeah, there's still the cheating aspect. Yeah. W- and, which stays present from the books. Right. Um, but it wasn't just like you know Beck running away after every situation or whatever just to find herself um you know every other week and joe wasn't being as like irrational or whatever like this was more consistent um which okay you know keeping the storyline just like more consistent for the viewer to understand because it was like the back and forth was a little much sometimes like what's uh, beck mad about now i mean it fit the characters perfectly i yeah I, I liked it in the book. I liked it in the book, but I can understand the TV show making that change. Yeah. Especially with it splitting over different episodes. You know, you're not... Well, some people uh, watch it all at once. I am definitely one of those people, but not everyone does. Yeah. So I kind of get that. But um, this is where, like, therapy comes in play. Dr. Nikki. Dr. Nikki, who... John Stamos. What's that? His name is John Stamos. It's from Full House. That was... Wait, you didn't know that? No. Yeah, no, that's John Stamos from Full House. Oh my god. What is he doing? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know he was a licensed therapist. Wait, did you actually not know that was him? No, I didn't actually know <laughs> he was in the show. With the beard, he looks a lot different. And also he's older. But yeah, that's right. John Stamos. Oh my gosh. What the heck? Right? Dr. Nikki. What a change in the... It was a good casting choice, honestly. I mean, like, oh, yeah. you you wouldn't have known, right? Like, it's, I didn't. It's, it's, it's yeah, yeah. You wouldn't have known, and you didn't. But like, it's the, I, I love that. Like, it, he's playing. He's he's a dynamic actor. So oh yeah, he, he yeah. can be in serious roles, and like, I think it's pretty cool. And you know, like Doctor Nicky was actually yeah, he's a pretty big part in the book. There's a lot more dynamic there, and you get a lot more in his head because then Joe goes in the files and like, through his, uh, like notes on Beck. And then you get to yeah. think about what he, what exactly he thinks about her. Yes, in his like own words, I think yeah. you get more inside the head of him. In the book, for sure. Yeah, which like I'm surprised Joe didn't do that in the show, because like yeah, because they have more time and everything to yeah, and flesh like, it out. His character would totally do that. Would like yeah. be so obsessive of like I need to find out what Beck is saying at the very least, whether he thinks that they're 
having a relationship together, he still would at least be like, well, I need to know what Beck says to know, like, where I can be better and, well, quote unquote, be better, but just, like, manipulate her more. Yeah. Um, but then uh, at the end of this episode, I want to say, he figures out exactly what Beck says. He's thinking about killing the therapist, but then she basically was drifting apart from him. And then, like, she he sees the video tape of him or like i think it's just the recording of um back basically saying like uh the more you want me the less i want you i think i need time to just figure myself yeah. out he and sees so that very he, single clip and he decides yeah and then he's like okay yeah he's just like dr nikki doesn't need to die and i think we need to end things and they, they kind of have that in the book too that's where we get onto the karen thing that goes yeah. into the next episode but it was a lot more like just like he she didn't have a specific reason and he was like uh or not that you need a specific reason like she wanted to work on herself and needed time after peach's death but like he was a lot more forgiving and like understanding than the joe in the book would have been i think because he would have been like well i can help you here and yeah um but yeah then we get into karen and oh my gosh i love karen first of all yeah in the in the show she's a lot well, even in the book, in she's the very book, likable. She's good. She, they're, she's good in both of them. It's just, I think the book does a good job of making you think that he might break out of it from her, and then the show also does that. And like, this is the only time where that little uh, arc with him, Paco, and Claudia, kind of makes sense and works well because yeah, Karen's like, involved. Yeah, and Karen kind of shows the better side of him, quote yeah. unquote, even though. Again, he has a lot of issues, but, you know, you see this, like, light to him of, like, there is good that he could do or whatever, yeah, and she could help him break away from whatever. And she's so, like, I mean, Karen was Claudia's friends for first, so, like, Paco and, like, him, like, it just works out really well because Paco's always in the apartment, and he ends up taking on that father figure, like, full on. And right. this is the only episode where it truly makes sense about this arc right right i still just like i think they could have made the whole karen arc work without having them being introduced or at least like yeah definitely. just having them contained within that episode like if she was like if they were fully just like their friends of karen and not something separate yeah um i don't know again I just think the, like, Paco, uh, Claudia, and Ron arc, like, really changed a lot of the show. And if you don't read the book, as, like, people that both watched the show first, like, we both really liked it. I wouldn't have, like, I like the arc separate, but for what now I know how it should have been. And, like, honestly, like, looking at it analytically... I can see, like, oh, yeah, this, like, character is kind of back and forth and isn't as consistent as he should be. Which can add some value. But, uh, uh, you know. Um, But I don't think you need to, like, read the book. Like, I think you'll enjoy this, especially if you haven't read the book. I think you'll really like this episode. Like, the majority of people have, too. All around, it's really... It's a solid Good one. show. And then when uh, Joe and what's her face break up, Karen, it's much less. Uh, so sort of like in the book, you have the cop boyfriend or not? Cop, sorry, cop brother of Karen that finds Joe and just like beats him up in the street and like intimidates him. But in the show, they just break up and then it's like very like they, like they Whatever. just break up and then they're like, yeah. okay, yeah, it's done. Yeah. And it's very adult like, and then it makes you like Karen a lot more. Yeah. But at the same time, like, in the book, Karen didn't do anything wrong. Like, Joe just calls her, like, a slut. Oh, my God, Joe. <laughs> it's so brutal. We talked about this, I think, in the last episode, but Joe, oh, my God, was the worst. Like, yeah. I guess yeah. you really because, saw like, the worst when he was with Karen, while this, you kind of saw the best Yeah. in the show. Yeah, like, in the, in the book with Karen, like, you could just so obviously, like, by reading it, like, she's pointing out, he's pointing out, like, all the things that are good about her, but yet... She's not back, and you're just sitting there reading. It's like, bro, Karen's just like clearly the better option, right. but he can't take it. So she's then... way too good for him. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, he like just says the meanest thing, and he just refers to her as his cat. 
yeah. or whatever, which I uh, have a lot of issues with. He yeah. really he, made me hate him. Yeah, he's a lot more devious in that book, man. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. If you really want to read, like, if you've seen the show and haven't seen or haven't read the book, oh, my gosh, and you like the kind of character that just is fully, just I guess, devious. no filters. Yeah. yeah. Just mischievous. Like, the worst of people you like reading about that. And honestly, very realistic way. Yeah. We all, we all know one book. we all know one guy that would just like break up and then have no really good reason except for just being like blurting like you're a slut. Yeah, just like I'm gonna say the worst things that'll damage you because you can't be with anyone else but me, and so I'm mm. gonna make you feel like you don't deserve. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, he it's gross. was awful. Um, so then we're getting towards the end. Everything's wrapping up. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like like the last. And the last two episodes were like you could tell it was closing i guess yeah Cause um the, okay so like i, I just want to touch on the two things that i really didn't like from that other other than these two things it's basically the same as the book but there's this whole like beck figures out obviously in both the book and the show about canvas and it's like that works out just fine and you have that whole sort of arc there with her in the her in the cage yeah and uh yeah like it's very secluded and then it ends with her dying and then um dr nikki he blames it all on him and then the book ends with him seeing this new girl come in the store and he's like oh what's your thing it's basically starting with the cycle of new it's like uh Finding his replacement for Beck. Like, yeah, it's showing that, like, he is a... And this is yeah, always yeah. going to be something he does. There's no, like, fixing... And there's no one person. Like, it's always going to be... Yeah, oh, he's, let's, he's always going to obsess. Yeah. And so... Which I do like that aspect, and it both happen in the story and the yeah, show, well, but... So two things change. Uh, one, Paco, Claudia, and them. That's So he kills Ron. Yeah. And then saves Paco, and then basically, like, disposes of the body, and then Claudia and Paco move out, and then, like, he's done, like, a good thing for them there, because, like, Ron was just a drunk asshole who was just gonna kill yeah. either Claudio or And Paco. always hold... The biggest issue was that he used to be a parole officer, and he yeah, would... connections, yeah. And he would take away Paco if, like, Claudia ever stood up to him. Because she had issue with, like, uh, drug abuse in the past. And, well, even still continuous, she was just, like, in and out. Which he also didn't help. Like, he was supplying, or some boyfriend was supplying her. It was just all around a terrible situation. And he was going to hold that against her if she ever tried to speak out against him. So, like, she was stuck. Yeah, so, yeah. And then Joe, in the middle of... Having Beck locked up in the cage, just having to deal with that, and no, I just didn't like it. And then, and then the other change is Candace is alive. Yeah, Candace is the woman that walks in the store. Yeah, and that's so so stupid. I hate it. Yeah, I I, hate it. I don't because like she the disappears Candace. for a year just to show up at that very moment and be like surprised I'm on to you instead of going to the cops. Yeah, Candace's arc makes no sense. Zero, Genuinely, zero sense. Like I don't. Maybe she was just like not even there all, all along. Yeah. Which it, like we know is not true. Like she's actually yeah, alive. Yeah, and, and but... if you watch the second season, you know she's there and like her and even there, it's just like what is she what. Yeah, like it's I, stupid. It's 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 just dumb. They should not have included that. Yeah, I didn't like that. Well, in the book they had that scene. However, it was like another woman that he actually saw or met earlier in the season. I think while was it while they were him and Beck were on a break or was it? Because I know he was still interested in Beck, but then you now she was being distanced, and he was like, "Oh, maybe I'll just go after this other girl," which like. I kind of like that aspect because we can tell that he is just obsessive. He doesn't actually care about these women. Mm. While, like, that didn't happen in the, 
show, they made it Candace instead rather than this stranger woman, which I also didn't like that arc. Yeah, I also didn't. I, I didn't like both the ways they wrapped that up. Like, yeah, I didn't like the way the the Ron situation either, specifically because then Paco ends up coming to the store. I can't remember for what, but he opens the door of like where. He thought Joe was going to be because he normally was in the basement. Right, and, and then he sees Beck. And then yeah, she's Beck like, had, help me. And then Paco just runs away and then keeps Well, Joe's Paco secret. runs away because, like, Beck said, like, um, something about, like, he's a bad he's man. A ki- yeah, like, he killed someone. And Paco's scared that she knows about Ron. Mm-hmm. And he, she's a, or he's afraid that she's going to tell the police and he would get in trouble because, like, obviously Joe warned him. You know, you helped you saw this, like, we need to cover this up. Don't tell anyone. And so I get why he, like, kind of ran away. But after, like, he found out, because there's no way he didn't find out that uh, Beck was, like, died. Like, I yeah. feel like he would have. It was pretty big on the news, and even though they moved away. Yeah. I don't and, know. I just feel like also, he would have I mean, known. It, it makes sense if you just watch the show, and, like, it, like it's fine in its own right, but I, I didn't like it. Because well, it, it adds nothing. Yeah, and like, wouldn't you tell the police afterwards? Because yeah, Beck's dead. It's not I'm, like she's gonna, he's gonna, or she's gonna rat yeah. on him because she's dead. I don't know. But I think the whole, he, like, I think the whole thing that went on there is like, he realizes that Joe's doing this for him, or he thinks so. So then he has this weird sort of tie of loyalty to yeah. Joe. And it just, this is a kid. He was yeah. a kid. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, don't know. I, I, didn't, I didn't like it. I thought that was a dumb choice and totally unnecessary. Yeah. And he was just too mature for his age. Like He's definitely had a lot of stuff going on that he should not have had as a kid. Like the his mother's like abuse. And it's just, obviously he's been through a lot, this character. But again, he's still a child. And he seemed too mature in handling that situation, yeah. even though two people died. I don't know. I just... Yeah, the whole ending is where it lost me. And then, like, it wasn't necessarily a bad end if you just watched the TV show and haven't watched the movie or, or haven't read the book. But at the same time, I don't know. It just, like, that... It took away from just Joe and Beck and the cage in that whole sequence of events right and let's actually jump back a bit to like the cage and the whole thing i will say in the tv show beck finding the stash which ultimately led her getting joe capturing her and putting her in the cage um makes more sense because like you know she is given like she's tipped off about hiding stuff in the bathroom and then she looks up and sees like the panel on the ceiling is moved like any girl would be like oh what's up there like i want to know what my boyfriend has maybe it's just whatever like it makes more sense than in the book where she just removed like the painting for no reason and was looking behind the wall i don't know i just maybe i'm remembering that wrong but i don't think it like fell or anything yeah, I think it was just, she had, like, she was just snooping. Yeah, which... Well, actually, no. We, we don't even know. Like, she just kind of finds it. Yeah. Which, there was no reason why. Like, she never explained why, but still, that's such a weird... Because you're in Joe's head. So, like, she yeah, just finds true. it, and then all of a sudden, she's scared and trying to leave. And I guess that makes more sense for the show to do. I think, but, uh, I think it was kind of creative, too. Like, it having... Was, it was, they tied it in, and they tied it in as best they could, I feel like. It just, it, right. it was just unnecessary. I don't know, I would just disagree. Well, I guess it was unnecessary because, like, well, yeah, it didn't whole... add too much because it ended in the same result, but I, just, mm. I thought it was more creative. Um, yeah. I liked it. And then going into the, where she was in the cage, Beck was in the cage, how she like ended up escaping was less about seducing joe like she did in the book and instead she like created a whole plan about like we're gonna frame this and we can run away together which like i feel like it really showed the difference of the characters because the beck in the show had like thoughtfully constructed and made like 
really a whole way out and had a lot of planning and just a lot went into it, a lot of work while the Joe and the book just was like, I'm going to think of the best way possible I can get uh, like out of here. And that's just like seducing him, which was typical of the character and did later end up and like Joe was like, clearly a sex offender because he's holding this woman hostage and they have sex um which we kind of like mentioned a little bit about in the last episode Mm -hmm. about joe just like it was hard because it's hard to say with his character because technically he like believed that he always asked for consent and all that but clearly that was a situation where he did not it was very wrong but yeah that was like a huge difference and really ultimately showed the difference in the characters but yeah remaining I, remarks i guess that we have yeah i i, I agree it she was much more competent than show she like had this side to her that like was very redeemable in the way where she had her wits and she was confident and she could do this and that and she almost gets away in the show but in in the book she doesn't get away and like the way she goes out there was kind of it, it's, it was kind of badass in its own right because Joe's just basically like, oh, like, we could have made this work, but you were this and that and the other. And then Beck's basically just saying, like, look, and she's like, I have issues. And just like, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear and everything. It's just like, it basically like tore, like, it, it, like, it broke Joe's heart because he, he had this whole idea of what she thought in her head. Yeah. And then, like, she's basically just saying, like, I have a bunch of issues. Like, I don't, I never really wanted you. I never really felt anything for you. Yada, yeah. yada. And then Joe just couldn't take it, and then he killed her. Yeah. And that, that's, but it's kind of badass in her own right, because, like, even at the threat of, like, Beck's survival, she couldn't just sit there and lie, because she's like, this right. is how it is. Right. And it's kind of, that, that was kind of a badass way for her to go out. But in the, in the show, it was... I don't know if I like that more. I, I don't I don't think I like that more. I don't think I think it was again creative and the show had a lot more creative liberties, I'll say. Um but uh and it wasn't again Beck's character was completely different and I didn't necessarily like that change. Yeah. Um but the actress was great. Yeah. She did play her really well of yeah. what I, yeah. she had. Like Penn Badgley and then uh whatever yeah. one of your Beck's <laughs> actress was net. I've I've seen her in a bunch. She's she's really good, and yeah. you could tell between the the two of them there was a lot of chemistry. Yeah, they were actually attracted to each other. Yeah, and all the casting was done really well. It's just those big strays from the source material that we don't really like so much. Yeah, but that's just our own opinion. But we'd like to hear yours in the comment yes, section. We would. Do you like that one? I like that I little... love that. Yeah, that transition. It's but one that's... of our more different. Um, then what we've covered, and I feel like this was uh, one of the genre. most different adaptation was. Yeah, so far we've had two pretty faithful adaptations. Yeah. And then uh, this next one, I'm, uh, yeah, I'll, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. We're going to be reviewing this. If you got this far, yeah. our next book is The Book Thief. And uh, I'm so stoked. We've already started reading it. And I, I just, it was one of my favorite books from like a long time ago. And yeah, I, we both I had still to read it. it in high school. And it was one of the few that I read in high school that I just absolutely just loved. And I, I'm re, on, upon reread, same. We feelings, have a lot of opinions. I can't wait to see the book or the movie. Have you never seen it? Mm-mm. I had, to, in my class, we read the book and then we watched the movie. I Not didn't really. remember a lot. This was like, oh my God, six, seven years ago. But. I do know that we watched it both. I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited to rewatch. Cause yeah, this one I will have a lot to say. I'm I'm just gonna be gushing over the yeah. book the whole time. <laughs> but anyways, spoilers. <laughs> so yeah, join us and let us know how you felt about the book, you the show, like all your opinions, and let us know if you're excited for our next book. Yeah, we'll see you then. Yeah, deuces.